we're going to look at our second of the three major parts of fluid dynamics, and that's buoyancy force. Well, sometimes pressure is useful. It's a lot of times really useful, but sometimes we just want to know what's the force that will accelerate an object. And, you know, we want to have a Newton's second law problem, for instance. And Lisa, this leads us definitely back to the concept of forces. So the force that we use when dealing with fluids is called the buoyancy force, and it's given by the following equation. It says that the upward buoyancy force due to a fluid is equal to the density of the fluid times the volume of the submerged object, or the volume of the object that's submerged, or just the part of the object that's submerged, times gravity. And I'll give you a little bit of a warning. It's confusing sometimes for a lot of people that there's a fluid density and a volume of the object. And it's actually even more confusing because it's not the volume of the object, it's the submerged volume. So only the part of the object that's under the surface of the fluid. So if you have, for instance, a boat that has part of it in the water, part of it out of the water, the volume we're talking about is only the part that's below the water. If more of the uh, ship gets pushed underwater, then the volume of the submerged will go up and the buoyancy force will increase. So if we put in more cargo into this ship, the ship will be lower in the water, but there will be a higher buoyancy force to counter that increased weight force. Just kind of a classic type of problem that you'll see. But be careful, density of the fluid, volume of the submerged part of the object. So let's look and see where this comes from. And we're going to use pressure to get there. We'll look at some limitations of this at the very end. First, let's imagine a block sitting in the middle of a fluid. So we take our same picture. Instead of having a little posted stamp in the middle, we're going to have a block. The block has some area of its base and some, some height to it. We're going to look at the pressure on the top surface and the pressure on the bottom surface. The pressures on the side surfaces are going to cancel out, so we don't really worry too much about it. It's just really the top and the bottom that's going to come into play for this. So the pressure on the top is given by the density of the fluid. You know, we have some fluid. It's in some gravity. We're probably on the Earth. And it has some height from the surface down to the top. So we're looking at the height from the surface down to this top area. Same thing for the bottom. Density of the fluid hasn't changed, the gravity hasn't changed. However, we're looking at the height to the bottom of the surface. So from the surface to the bottom of the block. Well, we compute the difference of the forces. And the difference of the forces is just the difference of the force on the top minus the force on the bottom. So look at the force pushing down from the top, and we look at the force on the bottom. And we're going to see that this is equal to the pressure on the top times the area, minus the pressure on the bottom times its area. And we substitute in, we know that the pressure on the top is equal to the fluid times g times the height. Pressure on the bottom is the fluid times g times its height from the surface down to the bottom surface. And again, we keep the same area. It says area of the shape that we're looking at, so the area of the object. Well, we know that the difference from the height from the top down to the, from the surface to the top and the surface to the bottom, the difference of those two is really just the height of the object. We can make one more simplification, and the height of the object and the area of the object, well, that's just the volume of the object. So the density comes in from the fluid. The difference of the heights and the area that this pressure is exerted over is all parts of the object. And when we finish this up, we have still that factor of g left. So we get that the buoyancy force, we agree with our equation, that the buoyancy force is equal to the density of the fluid, the submerged volume of the object, and g. And we dealt with the entire object submerged under uh, the liquid. If any part of the submerged object is above, or if any of the volume of the object is above the, uh, the fluid level, 
um, then the object, that part is not submerged. And there's no contribution of the pressure above the surface of the fluid. We're no longer in the fluid, so we no longer have a pressure component to it. So we got to make sure that we're dealing with just the submerged volume of the object.